The study of perspective mostly seems to involve straight lines that often all angle in together one way or another. Straight lines and structures that are in straight lines in various relationships with each other. But not all life is as simple as straight lines. I want to look at perspective on curved walls, but I want to look at a very particular type of curved walls. But first, let's just have a quick recap of how perspective works when we don't have boxes of straight edges. Here we have a diagram that represents a series of round cylinders stacked on top of each other, such as we might find in a column. And these lines represent the edges where the segments touch. And what we can see is that if there were a segment at eye level, at the level of our eye or the camera observing this column, then the segments would join in what appears to be a straight line because we would be seeing the circular shape directly edge on. But if we then look at segment joins moving upwards, as each segment join moves higher above eye level, it becomes more and more and more and more rounded. And if we're looking down, Below eye level, the same thing happens. As we move down, the circular edge becomes rounder and rounder and rounder. And we see this effect not just in columns, but in other structures as well. In this base of a statue in Germany, we see this rounded curve here. And then as it goes higher above eye level, it rounds a little bit more. We see the curve not in a straight line, but in architectural details, such as this setback on the buttress, that line up in a straight line if we're looking directly at the statue base, but because the overall shape is cylindrical, they adopt a curve as they go above eye level. And the further we go above eye level, the greater the curve becomes, the more pronounced the circular shape is. So this is the direct application of the principle of perspective on circular buildings, circular structures. What happens when walls aren't circular, but they're curved? I'd selected this corner of the Zeughaus in Berlin to draw and explain some of the principles. And the most important thing with perspective is to always start by determining where is eye level, because eye level is the point where the angles will change if we're looking at boxes or where the curves will start to transform from a straight line to curves of greater and greater curvature as we move up or down from eye level. So knowing where this point is, is very important. But when I began to look for it here, I had lots of problems because the principle of eye level is that it gives us a straight line. And we have all of these horizontal lines in the decorative stonework at the base of this corner of the inner courtyard. When I tried to line up to find eye level, I couldn't. What appeared to be a straight line here didn't continue as a straight line on this wall. And the thing with eye level is that it's the horizontal line across the entire scene. And it took me a while to realize what the problem was. I suddenly remembered that I tilted the photo slightly to make this section of the photo more upright. Let me show you the original photo. If we compare it with this one, you can see how this window is more upright. This window seems to lean towards the left more. But this is actually the scene the camera took unadjusted. When I tilted this scene and cropped it, I didn't so much change eye level, I disguised how to find it because I've shifted lines from horizontal to at an angle. If I look at this, however, and try and find the horizontal line, it's very low down. And I couldn't work out why it would be so low down until I realized that I crouched down really low and angled my camera upwards. It's given me a very low eye level because my camera level was very low. So I've reprinted just this section for us to look at now. But I explained all that because it's important when we go to find eye level, if it's not obvious, then something's not right in our photo that we don't understand yet. But here we have the most obvious thing though is why is this 
not symmetrical? Why is this window and this window not the same? The answer is very simple. They're not the same because this, if we look at this top half of our column here, represents this. This is actually a quarter circle, not a half circle. And not just is it a quarter circle, but we're not standing directly in front of this center section of it. We're actually standing basically here, looking straight at our corner section. And therefore, there is less curvature here than over here. And the amount of curvature will affect the amount of distortion that we have of our structure and of the architectural elements such as windows and arches that are in it. And this is very important to observe at the start so that we don't start to look at this, oh yes, I know what this is, this is this, and we start to draw lines like this when in fact we need lines that are asymmetrical. But except for the fact that this center line is not centered on this distance. This perspective pattern is true here in that the lines closer towards eye level have a very shallow curve and the further up they become, the more rounder, the fuller the curves become. And this is what we'll need to capture as we draw this. And just as we see here, under eye level, these lines curve the other direction. So if eye level is here, we can actually see that the course of stonework beneath this angles down, and this line angles down even more. So that's the fanning pattern that we need to do in our lines. And while we're not drawing much of this section, the same is true. Above this line, these lines angle increasingly in an upward direction. And below this line, the couple of lines that we have angle the other way. Now this curvature very much affects foreshortening. We know that visually things appear to narrow as they move further away from us. And because this wall is curving, this part of the wall is further away from us than this part of the wall. And so it's getting shorter, this corner of the window is lower down than this corner of the window, and they're both lower than this corner of the window. And they also narrow as they move away as well. And so from here to here is a lot narrower than from here to here. And because this wall is curving away, but not as quickly as this wall curves away, the same thing is happening but not to the same extent. And so spotting all of these differences that are also then echoed in these recessed decorative elements above the windows is important. And if we look at these triglyphs, which it's believed are a stylized form of representing the ends of wooden beams that held up the roofs of the temples and buildings when Greek structures were made entirely out of wood. That that this one that we see most square on is probably the best depiction of the actual proportions of these triglyphs. And as they move away to the right, they distort slightly. As they move away to the left, they distort more and more. They drop lower and they become narrower. And the spaces between them do the same. So let's have a go drawing this now and see what the challenges are in trying to capture this particular distortion that we get on curved walls, particularly when we're not looking front on to our curve and therefore this curving is not symmetrical. If we go back to this full picture, we can see that these vertical lines tilt towards the right this one tilts towards the right slightly, this one tilts towards the left. So this is lining up with where I was standing or kneeling when I took this photo. And the fact that there's more image to the left rather than the right simply means I had swiveled the camera as well. So understanding the possibilities of both taking a photo and cropping a photo create can be helpful in working out exactly what's happening 
in my reference, particularly if I neither took the photo nor cropped it myself. So let's start drawing. As always with these freehand ink drawings, I start with a section of the building or of the drawing that I'm confident I can draw fairly accurately, fairly in proportion due to its location and simplicity. And the, in some ways, the more central it is, the better. So it's a pretty easy choice in this one of this front right pilaster. And I'm also careful to make sure I get the perspective angle between these two. It would have been easy just to have drawn the line between them fairly horizontal because it's not that much of a curve. But this curve starts the pattern for the angles increasing as they get higher. And so I would have been robbing the drawing of some of its uh, visual drama if I didn't maximize the possibilities for that later on. Now I position these decorative bands between supposedly the stonework and I realize of course I forgot to put the right hand uh, outside lamp in before I put the lines across. I was very aware of it right up until the point I forgot about it and just drew them across before I did the, the lamp. Never mind. The one thing I'm doing in this drawing is I'm removing as I draw the distortion that the camera lens has caused, this exaggeration of vertical perspective, which often is created by the lens in scenes that in life have no sense of vertical perspective. And so I do this simply by making all these vertical lines vertical, not following the slants that they have in my drawing from the camera. And if you're wondering, well, how do you know where you get the gap between objects from? Do you take it in the middle of the height of the objects or what? No, you take it at eye level. The distance that various elements are from each other at eye level is the distance that you want to have them the entire way up the drawing, which does mean that the upper parts can end up looking significantly wider, particularly when eye level is down low as it is in this case, in fact, very low as we discovered before. So I've just about finished the first section here. And now I'm doing the arch window on the ground floor so I can then push up on this side. I decide to do the more extreme perspective angles first on the left hand side here. And when I'm going across, what I try and do is measure the horizontal distance between things, between the lines I have to draw. In this case, particularly that dark shadowed area of the arched window, I look at how wide that is and I try and put a dot that far from my right hand side of that arch window and then establish the width that way. And then when I've got the width in place, I'll then do the arch to fit that. Personally, I find that's a much more accurate way to do it. And now I'm just finishing the top section up here. I'm not going to do any great effort with hatching on this drawing. I'm not trying to capture the silhouette of the shadows of the, the more recent roof that's been erected over the courtyard of this large square building in the heart of Berlin, part of Imperial Berlin in terms of its architecture. And so now I've got this last uh, right hand section, get the lower one in place. I had endless problems trying to establish the width here because I kept losing count of how many vertical lines I'd drawn close together with how many I would need to draw. And then there were so many that it made it even harder to work out. And I did need to work them out because I had to know which ones when they went up past the entablature were going to represent the rounded pilaster in the very corner between this quarter circle and the straight wall that came off it. And again, with the top of this window, it would have been easy just to do it straight across. And again, I would have lost something of the curvature and of the, the fullness of the overall width. Now I messed up this quite a bit, but I think I managed to improve it by being able to, fortunately to re-establish where these lines were. I was able to bring the top line of this band above the pilasters down a bit and then hide those earlier 
marks. So here are the, the triglyphs that I talked about earlier with the meta spaces in between. Fortunately, with between the shade and the lines I had to draw, I was able to, I think, disguise that wrong first line quite effectively. And this is why I never get too worried about mistakes when I'm drawing in ink. Firstly, because there's no point. And secondly, because invariably, there are things that, that we can do to lessen the impact, if not cover the wrong lines completely. And so now I decide just to put a few little lines in in the upper corners here, just to indicate that this is in fact a quarter cylinder and there are straight lines, straight walls that come off it on both sides, which architecturally gives a little bit of context to it, which I thought was good. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you found this interesting and helpful in drawing perspective on curved walls. If you want to have a go yourself, of course, you'll find this drawing again on my channel community page. So why not have a go? But whatever you're drawing, however you're drawing it, make sure you have fun. See you next time. Bye.